here in California, a place that's very open to new eco-friendly technologies to find out about the future of fuel cells. The idea of using hydrogen to power cars isn't new. Volkswagen has been working on fuel cell vehicles for over a decade. Now the VW Group is presenting two research vehicles that could soon be ready for volume production, the Passat High Motion and the Audi A7 H-Tron. Klaus Nietzwitz checks out the Passat High Motion first. He finds driving this hydrogen-powered vehicle to be very relaxing. As Americans put it, it's very quiet and powerful. The Passat High Motion can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 10 seconds. The car is based on Volkswagen's modular transverse matrix platform, making it possible for the engine to be fitted into the firm's other models, such as the Golf. The high motion runs on electric power. Thanks to its modular construction, its drive components can be found, as usual, in the engine compartment. The high motion fuel cell drive generates the electricity to power the electric motor from hydrogen and oxygen. The combination triggers a chemical reaction whose products are electricity and water. But how safe is the technology? Many drivers still have concerns about hydrogen-powered vehicles, but there's no need to worry, says Klaus. Modern hydrogen tanks are made of carbon fiber, a high-strength and time-tested material that's used in Formula One. It's much safer than a regular gas tank made of sheet metal. The hydrogen tanks are found in the car's underbody, so they don't take any space in the interior. An additional high voltage battery stores the electricity generated. During startup and acceleration, the battery and fuel cell work together to drive the powertrain. With its three phase motor, the high motion features a high performance drive system, like all of Volkswagen's e cars. Audi has put the fuel cell technology jointly developed with VW into an A7 dubbed the H Tron. The H comes from the chemical symbol for hydrogen. On the outside, the A7 H-Tron looks like a regular series production model. As with the Passat High Motion, the fuel cell is found under the hood. Because the car only emits water vapor, its exhaust pipe is made from plastic. This helps reduce the vehicle's weight. The fuel cell used in the Audi A7 is identical to the one in the Passat, but the A7 has a slightly larger battery, which increases the combined output to 170 kilowatts, or around 220 horsepower. The A7 H-Tron's performance is more than respectable. It sprints from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.9 seconds and can reach a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour. You might think that this hydrogen-powered vehicle is so chock full of technology and electronics that there'd be no space for the Audi's Quattro four-wheel drive system. But that's not so, says Klaus. The fuel cell supplies power to the electric motor that drives the front axle. The battery stored in the trunk runs a second electric motor providing power to the rear axle. So there's no mechanical connection between the front and rear axles. But that's not all. The A7 H-Tron can also run on straight electricity. Unlike the Passat, the A7 can be charged using an electrical cable. The car has an all-electric range of 50 kilometers, which is an advantage for city driving and saves on fuel, in this case, hydrogen. Instead of a rev counter, the H-Tron has a power meter. It informs the driver about the actual power flow, as well as the fuel level in the hydrogen tank and the level of battery charge. The screen in the center console also provides an overview of power consumption.
Owners of electric cars might ask themselves why they should switch to a fuel cell powered one. The answer is quite simple. Fuel cell powered cars have a long range, in this case around 500 kilometers, and are easily refueled. Filling up a hydrogen powered vehicle takes around three minutes, whereas you need two to three hours to recharge an electric car. Klaus would like to think, imagine that, in 10 or 15 years' time, a car like this could cost less than a gas or diesel-powered one. At least he hopes that will be the case. It's still unclear how much such fuel cell vehicles will cost. Valuable materials like platinum are needed to make the fuel cells, and the cars will only be produced in small numbers to start with. So prices are likely to be in line with those of the electric and hybrid cars already on the market. But unlike California, Germany doesn't yet boast many filling stations where people can tank up with hydrogen. At present, there are just 16 in the entire country. That number is expected to increase to around 400 by 2023. But to offer nationwide coverage, Germany would need to have around 1,000 hydrogen refueling stations.